Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ, who was, who is, and is to come. Good morning. I am Pastor Joni Schilling, and I am one of the pastors here at Mommy United Methodist Church. And we are here and welcoming you from wherever you are participating in this service. Even though we are apart, we are together in one spirit, one body of Christ, not bound by time and space. Let us worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. sinking feeling. Maybe it's the sinking feeling you get when your friend tells you they're going to move away or you thought you knew everything for the test and then you get there and you don't know anything. Or maybe it's the feeling you've had as things have changed with the coronavirus. Just like this egg, when I put it in the water, it sinks. That's the sinking feeling we get. And that sinking feeling happens because something just isn't right. But that egg can't change the fact that it has sunk. It's going to stay there on its own because of what it is. But if we add something, if we add something to the situation, the egg doesn't have to stay where it's at. The egg can rise to the top. And that's because the properties around the egg have changed. The same thing happens in our life. When we add something around us, our properties change. And that something is God. When we remember that God is in control, that God has blessed us and he will always bless us, we can rise to the top of the situations that are presented to us. It doesn't matter what we face. It doesn't matter how difficult the situation. God is in control, and he is going to help us rise. Now, the water's a little bit cloudy. And the more of Jesus we add, the higher up the egg will continue to go. And that's because the more we keep Jesus in our heart and the more we remember his blessings, the more we can rise above. So that's Jesus's blessings in our life and the way that he helps us to rise above our circumstances. Would you pray with me this morning? God, we thank you so much for all of the blessings that you give us. And sometimes when we have a sinking feeling, it's hard to remember those blessings. It's easier to think about what we're facing and the difficult times. Help us to remember your blessings even in the difficult times. God, we love you and we thank you. And all of God's children said, Amen. Have a great morning. 
We want to thank you for your continued support through your prayers and your gifts to our congregation. And we'd like to invite you, if you are looking for a way to give, to do so by giving online through the Tithely app or by simply mailing your contributions to the church. And I invite you now to pray with me. Lord of life, thank you for the gift of this life. And thank you for the gift of eternal life that has been granted through Jesus Christ. We also thank you, Lord, for glimpses of heaven that you have given us on this side of eternity. Trusting that heaven is a present and a future reality, we sense that you are indeed holding us close as we face uncertain days. And we know that our future life in heaven will be full of your glorious presence. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord, for the way in which we can forget your eternal promises and allow our actions to focus only on this life. Forgive us when we're greedy, when we're focused too much on things, when we're focused too much on our troubles and grief and, and sin turns us away from you and to temporary satisfaction. Remind us to focus on what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Loving God, you have filled our hearts with love for one another, our families, our friends, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And love leads our hearts to grieve for those who are hurting right now. And so as we pause in a moment of silent prayer, we surrender the people on our hearts to your care trusting that you love them even more than we do. So in silence, we pray for Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers also, Lord, for all those who are in leadership right now in our community, in our state, in our country, and in our world. We pray for strong leadership for leaders to turn to you for your wisdom. We surrender them and all that they are doing to your work, to your care. And together, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Good morning. My name is Russ Titchener. I'm honored to be one of the pastors here at Mommy United Methodist Church, and I am so glad that you are with us here today. Uh, today is a special day in that we're kicking off our new sermon series, uh, The Journey to True Happiness. Uh, this is a sermon series that's, that's based on the Beatitudes, those uh, statements that Jesus makes as he's moving into the longest sermon uh, that we record in Scripture, that Sermon on the Mount. And so today we will start to unpack that as far as giving a general overview, and then we will follow that with looking at each one of Jesus' eight statements uh, in the following eight weeks as we uh, start to examine what it is to not live in the world, but to live in the kingdom of God. And so I'm so glad that you're with us today to be a part of this series. Let's take a moment, let's pray, and then I'll move into the sermon. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for being a God, Lord, who gives us instructions on how we are to live into the kingdom of God. Lord, it is truly by living out our call to be in your kingdom that we experience true happiness and true blessing in our life. And so help us, Lord, over these next few weeks to examine this in our lives, uh, to uh, hear your voice, uh, to follow your direction, so that we truly, Lord, can... Um, can experience your spirit working upon our hearts and our minds to increase um, our happiness 
uh, and our blessedness that we find in you. And so bless us today, Lord. We love you and we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. You know, the Beatitudes are special for, for several reasons, but one big reason uh, being that all eight statements of Jesus start with, with the Greek word makarius, uh, a word that can be translated as, as, as fortunate or blessed or even happy. Now, for those of us that live in a country that, that uh, established our independence on the phrase life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, we are immediately drawn into that word, that idea and that word of happiness. For it is truly woven uh, into the, to the national fabric and to our national identity, so to speak. And yet the, the truth is that the pursuit of happiness doesn't suddenly stop at, at our borders. Rather, we live in a world uh, that truly is focused on happiness. Let's take a moment and look at this clip. Now, that was a really a great ad, right, uh, that was really focused in telling us that, that happiness starts with, with a smile. And yet, after seeing that ad kind of finishing up there and, and starting to see people with uh, a, a can of Coke in their hand and a, and a smiley face in their hand, well, you start to see what the, the ad's really about, right? In other words, to choose Coke is to choose happiness. You know, in one sense, that ad is, is spot on. We can choose happiness, but, but true happiness won't be achieved by, by choosing the things that, that the world offers us. True happiness isn't born through people or through places or through things. Uh, true happiness doesn't come in by way of careers and programs and relationships and and possessions and, and even advice. True happiness doesn't even come by by a can of, of Coke, right? And the list goes on and on and on. You see, the world's understanding of, of happiness is a gamble because happiness is, is based on, on chance when it comes to the world's understanding of happiness. In fact, if you, if you go back and look at the root for the word happiness, uh, the word that it comes from is hap, H-A-P, and hap means chance. And so when our career is doing well or, or when we just bought a new car or moved into that, that dream house because, because things are favorable, well, the world tells us, well, you should be happy because, you know, there's a chance. There's a chance that our circumstances could be unfavorable. You know, when, when Jesus uses the word makarios, that word for happy or, or blessed, he is not talking about something that is, that is based on, on a chance. William Barclay, the, the famous Scottish theologian, told a story of how the Greeks used the word makarios to describe the island of, of Cyprus. They called it the happy isle because they felt Cyprus was, was so beautiful and so full of, of resources and, and so fertile that could grow anything on that island that a person would never need to go beyond its coastline to find everything that he or she needed for perfect happiness. 
In other words, perfect happiness was inclusive upon the island. William Barclay went on to say that Marcarius describes a joy which is serene or untouchable or, or self-controlled and completely independent of all chances and, and changes in life. In the same way, when, when Jesus is describing the happy life found in the Beatitudes, he's, he is not speaking of, of a happiness that has to do with chance or a happiness that has to do with situations or, or circumstances. Rather, Jesus is speaking of a, a happiness that, that is complete in and of itself, completely independent of, of all chances and, and changes in life. And that kind of, of true happiness is only found and can only be found in the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God that we will be talking about over these next eight weeks isn't a, a physical kingdom. In other words, not yet. Uh, one day it will be a physical kingdom when Jesus comes back. But, but today it is, it is a spiritual kingdom. You know, as I was thinking about this, how could we... How could we um, relay that concept of, of the spiritual kingdom. Uh, I was, I was uh, struck last night, I was doing a Zoom call with, a, with one of the committees here at church, and, and I know there's probably some uh, um, heresy going on in this example, but, but, but it really did dawn on me. It, that's kind of like the kingdom, right? I'm, I'm on this Zoom call, and, and, uh, and, and, and it's a real thing. I'm interacting with people and, and feeling emotions and validating uh, uh, things that people are saying and they're validating what I'm saying and yet I can't reach out and touch them or, or grab hold of them or um, in, in one sense they're, they're not there but in another sense they're very, very present. In the same way that the kingdom of God in one sense is, is spiritual. We can't reach out and grab hold of it and, 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 uh, and feel it and touch it. But on the other hand, it is, it is something that we can certainly experience, right? Uh, through the, the kingdom's presence in our life, through the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is, is preparing to teach on this, this true happiness that is, that is found in the, the kingdom of God. And, and he's getting prepared to, to extend this out to his disciples and, and those who are listening to him that day on the sermon uh, that he is preparing to preach on, on that mount that he is on. We see that um, account picked up on the fifth chapter of, of Matthew, starting in verse 1. It says, One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. You know, I think the message translation of the Bible adds some, some feeling to this and, and a little more what is happening in this sense. And it says this, when Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. And so Jesus, pulling himself out of the crowd, leads his disciples up a hill. He leads those who are committed with him, those who are willing to be step in step with him, right? Marching all the way with him to the top of the, of the mountain, or in the case of Galilee, to the top of a very large hill. And then he, he seats the disciples around him, close by, and, and then he begins to, to speak. Now, the words that Jesus will speak will be heard by, by many. No doubt that was the purpose for going up on, on the mountain because, because now he can not only speak to his disciples, but he can also speak to the crowd as his voice will carry down the mountainside and, and touch many ears uh, as Jesus speaks of, of the kingdom and the coming of God. And so while Jesus is gathered with his disciples, he begins to do just that, to speak words that are scattered far beyond this inner circle uh, to the crowd sitting below, so they too, so they too heard the teaching after teaching after teaching of the workings of the kingdom of God. You know, that is the way that, that grace is extended by both Jesus and by the kingdom of God. That no matter where you were that day, whether you were one of Jesus' inner core, right, that inner circle, 
or you were one that just came up at the last moment and were, were down to the bottom of the hill, right? You were still given the grace to hear the message that God wanted you to hear about his kingdom. Everyone is involved. Everyone is invited. Everyone is wooed to say yes to what God is offering, right? Hugh Halter, the co-author of the book, The Tangible Kingdom, shares a story of being in New York City just a, a few weeks after 9-11. He was, he was there to, to train some uh, pastors to be church planters. After he would finish teaching each day, he would, he would go down to a Irish, local Irish pub and, and eat dinner with some friends who, who lived in the city that he didn't get to see often. And so each night he was, he was able to have this meal with them. He said each night he would show up and, and he had the same waitress. It was a small uh, pub and there was just one waitress. Her name was Fiona. And, and so as the evenings would go by, Fiona started asking questions and, and started becoming interested in what uh, they were talking about. Fiona, as many people, had, had baggage. She was from Ireland. Uh, and in her growing up years, she had about a third of her friends in the 1980s and 90s were were sexually abused by the Catholic school system there. And, and through the Protestant and Catholic war years, two of her close friends had, had been killed in that war. And so she had ample reason to be, um, to be uh, um, bitter towards the church. And Hugh had ample reason not to judge her cynicism of organized religion. And yet he was trying to figure out a way in which he could start to answer some of her questions that she was having about this faith discussion without mentioning the church. How could I explain my, my love for Jesus without getting the words church in my vocabulary? And so he said, I simply started to talk to her about the kingdom. Fiona, Jesus came to offer an alternative way of life from all the exclusive and religious and sectarian and sinful ways that the people live. Jesus came to offer a bigger picture. He called it the kingdom, and it was huge for people back in Jesus' day, and, and it's huge for people today who, who are really looking to have an experience with the true God. She said she had never heard about the kingdom before. And so she started to ask those few knights who were remaining to tell her about that. And you said his final night in town as he was coming into the, the pub, he said that she, Fiona yelled across the, across the pub and said, here he comes. Here he comes. And as, as she said that, the, the, the crowd kind of split and he, he walked over to her and and she said, this is the guy that I was telling you about. You've got to hear how he talks about God. And then she looked at him and said, now tell me, tell me once again all the things that you told me about the kingdom of God so that they can hear too. You said that that night everything changed for him. He started an entirely new spiritual journey in his life that, that pulled him out of this jaded consumeristic Christianity that he was living in before uh, and when he got back home, he simply just grabbed a few friends and started a community that was committed to living out and inviting others into the kingdom ways of life. And he said, before we knew it, so many had joined us that, that we had planted a new church. William Barclay once said, the Beatitudes are not nebulous prophecies of some future bliss. Rather, they are congratulations Congratulations on, on what is. You see, Jesus did not sit down on the top of that mountain to, to paint some pie in the sky with his, with his words. Rather, he sat down to teach those who, who would listen about this new reality. One that wasn't based on, on chance, but one that was revealed in the, in the true nature of God and, and the work of his kingdom on earth. 
It was the, the journey of, of true happiness that Jesus was inviting his disciples to and, and all who would listen that day and beyond. It's a hard journey and a painful journey because it's a journey that causes us to have to die to our, our selfish wants and desires over and over and over again. But it's also a, a beautiful journey and one in which we can discover the, the true happiness that, that comes by being blessed by God. And so over the next eight weeks, we'll, we'll look at each one of these beatitudes, each one of these blessings of God, each one of these, these slices of happiness, if you will, that instruct us how, how we're to come out of living in the world and instead start to live into the kingdom of God. And so I hope, that, I hope that you will join us each week for this. You know, one of the things I would suggest is, as we make this journey together is that you take some time and, and, and memorize the Beatitudes. Uh, I did that in probably about three or four days. I, I put them on my wall in front of my elliptical, and, and every morning I would look at them, and, and before I knew it, I had them memorized. Uh, I think that will help you in your journey as, as we go forward. And, and just be open to the Spirit as we as start to unpack these to, to see how we can die to self and our self-desires, our self-wants, uh, so that God's will in us can live and so that we can truly be the kingdom people that God has called us to be. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for, we thank you for your instruction that comes through Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the word of Christ in our lives. And we thank you for your spirit that, that truly examines our hearts and our minds and, and ferrets out those places, Lord, that we need to turn over to you. Lord, we want to be kingdom people, not world people. And so, Lord, empower us through your spirit to do that and be that. Bless us today, Lord. We know you love us and we love you. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. We are so glad that you have worshipped with us this morning. And whether you are with us for the first time or the hundredth time, uh, we as a church family are passionate about you knowing that we are building a home here where you can be transformed by the grace of God to serve your neighbors. And we are passionate about connecting you with the ministries of this church so that you might grow and be transformed. So we invite you to explore our website where there are opportunities for all ages to learn and to grow and to be in groups, to connect with one another, and opportunities to serve. And because we, uh, as a church, long to be with you in prayer, Pastor Russ and myself, our Stephen ministers and our prayer partners are available to pray for you and to pray with you. And so we invite you to call the church with your prayer needs Email the church with your prayer needs. Those can be listed on our prayer chain. Those can be brought to our prayer partners and the pastors so that we might be in prayer for you or call you and pray with you. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive He lived and died To buy my pardon An empty grave is there to prove My Savior lives Because He lives I can face tomorrow Because He lives Because I know He holds the future And life is worth the living just because He lives I believe in the sun I believe in the risen one I believe I will
Cause he 